Hello everyone, thanks for coming. I'm Wolf from Bitpanda, I'm here with my colleague Luis and we're gonna tell you a little bit about the uh, crypto things that we do, the Pantos protocol and new exciting developments. And I'm gonna tell you a bit about the Bitpanda story, not too much I promise. Um, why we're here, how we got here. So started with these three guys, they wanted to buy Bitcoin, they couldn't. And they started their own broker, that's like the super short version. And uh, investing should be accessible to everyone. That's been kind of the mission since the beginning. And this is the mission we continue today. Um, development, here you can see some, some milestones. In 2014 it was founded, profitable from the start. And Pantos, which I will mention a bit later, also 2017, 2018. Then there were a lot of milestones like uh, metals launch, crypto indices, the card. Um, it has unicorn status now. Then also a white labeling solution, Bitpanda technology solution. And of course, the latest milestone is, is Bratislava. Here we are. With that, I go to the history of Pantos. Um, so again, a little temperature check in the room. Who here has used a bridge before? Okay, a lot of people. Who has lost money in a crypto hack before? Or, uh, well, okay, just one. Yeah, that's good. Good on you. <laughs> Pantos uh, basically was founded to solve the hardest problem, I would say, which is how to use token natively across multiple chains, how to transfer them between blockchains, how to do it in an easy to use and safe way. And uh, for that, the Pantos project was founded. In 2018, they did an ICO, initial coin offering, still funded from the ICO funds. It uh, started as a research project with a technical university in Vienna, now also Hamburg, and a state-funded Christian Doppler laboratory. And over time, more research partners joined the project, you can see it here. And currently, it's in the public testnet beta. So Holesky, Avalanche, Polygon, BNB, Kronos, Phantom, Silo. You can already use it, and I encourage you to use it. And this is what you can do now. So, for example, like I said, all testnet, but this is only one of the kind of initiatives that happen in Bitpanda ecosystem. And recently, we have some developments, which my colleague Luis is going to talk about a bit more. Yeah, thank you. So, of course, what we have as developments kind of of the last few years is uh, DeFi entering the scene. So this all was kickstarted pretty much by Uniswap V1 deployment in 2018. And uh, the vision is this kind of open source financial Legos for a permissionless financial system. So if we look at the past four to six years of DeFi, we see that the liquidity was kind of meh, it was okay, but the liquidity was not really of the size that serious financial institutions were able to use DeFi in any serious sort of way. The security, I guess the same, so a lot of exploits we already mentioned, yeah, it also ties into the whole topic of UX, so many phishing attacks, there are not really best practices for for security, etc. And the whole ecosystem was just very immature. And if we look at the DeFi ecosystem now in 2024 also, and also next year plus, we can say very happily that ecosystem has matured. So we have now 90 billion plus in liquidity. This is the data as of a few days ago from DeFi Llama. We have yeah, intent centric protocols, which make it much easier to access off-chain liquidity. In short, the whole thing is a lot more interesting now for serious players, institutional players who kind of need access to liquidity in size. Security wise, the contracts by this point are battle tested, one could say. So we have a lot better yeah, standard libraries for all sorts of things and tokens and protocols and have also improved a lot there. And uh, especially also best practices with audits, bug bounty programs, etc. And the UX part, I mean, there's account abstraction, ERC4337 kind of picking up steam that I'm sure a lot of people know here and all the bells and whistles that it brings. So no cryptic approved transactions more anymore before making a swap, more advanced recovery, social recovery, pay gas in ERC20 tokens, no need anymore to fund uh, eight different uh, rollups with ETH in order to transact. 
And we have, of course, also aggregators that find you kind of the best route for whatever you want to do in DeFi. So the UX problem also has improved. And we as Bitpanda see kind of uh, 2025 plus as the time where DeFi really becomes mainstream and usable for not just us here in the room, but for a retail audience. So, yeah, what uh, does this mean for us essentially? Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this book, uh, The Innovate Innovator's Dilemma is at this point, I would say, in uh, tech uh, literature quite common. And what is basically described there is that every time a new disruptive technology comes around, it in the beginning starts off worse in every aspect than the incumbent technology. And as I mentioned on the last slide, DeFi in fact started off worse in every aspect than TradFi and centralized finance. The liquidity was worse, the security was worse and arguably is still, um, and also the UX was worse and arguably still. And what then happens, according, according to uh, this book or many other uh, disruptive innovations, is that this new technology in the beginning caters a very, very niche use case. From this niche use case, we start off with a worse technology, but rapidly improve a lot faster than the incumbent technology that has already kind of decades of, of innovation in the back and where it's just much harder to come up with really new stuff. And over time, this niche market grows and grows and grows. And at some point, there's the tipping point where the disruptive innovation actually becomes like a threat to the incumbent technology and flips it on the back, essentially. And we think at Bitpanda that DeFi is a disruptive innovation of this nature and that custodial or traditional finance is an incumbent technology. And now it's a question, of course, what does this mean for us as a mostly custodial broker? So we see this as an opportunity and a threat. And um, we're thinking hard about what can we do to kind of mitigate the threat for us and seize the opportunity. And our solution that we came up with is the crypto hub. And yeah, basically... What is important to know there is that at Bitpanda only very few people interact with the blockchain. So a minority of people actually deposit and withdraw from the broker. A lot of our retail user base is too newbie for that and their funds never actually touch the blockchain. At the same time, Bitpanda is growing large, is becoming kind of a slower moving company, which is also kind of by force because um, I mean with Mika, kicking in next year, basically all custodial brokers are going to be regulated like banks and um, all the processes that come with it. And that's not a bad thing because we're custodying, custodying uh, like uh, billions of user funds. So it's good that there's a very, very tight eye on us. But uh, we were thinking, how can we under this environment still kind of um, tackle this opportunity and threat of DeFi? And um, yeah, the crypto hub is basically what we formed out of this. It's um, we took all teams that at Bitpanda interface with the blockchain in any sort of way and threw them into a separate product and engineering solution with the goal of kind of having a research hub that allows us to move a lot faster, be a lot more innovative. And our mission is to kind of bring this future of finance by seamlessly integrating Bitpanda's platform with the expansive landscape of DeFi. And we think that 2024 and 2025 is the perfect timing for this, exactly for that reason what I just showed, because DeFi is kind of in this stage in 2025 where it's going to flip TradFi in all these kind of scales that are relevant for users, so liquidity, security, and UX. And um, yeah, if we basically, oh, this is the one. If we basically look at our project uh, to kind of give a, give a, a quick rundown of it, uh, what we're doing actually in, in uh, practice is we have these kind of three target gap demographics. And for businesses and institutions, we provide an enterprise-grade custody solution that we build out into 
a tool to interface with DeFi in a secure and compliant way. So we, uh, we acquired a custody company a while ago and um, yeah, are kind of shifting our efforts to be able to interact on-chain in a, in a very secure and compliant way. For retail users, we of course have the typical blockchain deposits and withdrawals that are our bread and butter. Um, we're thinking, how do we make this ready for the age of DeFi? And uh, basically, yeah, the simple solution is not very exciting, but we're like rapidly accelerating our efforts there to offer a lot more chains to, uh, you will be able to withdraw ETH to uh, whatever 50th roll-up there is. And uh, we are now, and this is super exciting, also thinking very hard about how to use these new paradigms like account abstraction, social recovery, um, gas sponsoring, etc., to build a retail-friendly, truly retail-friendly access point to DeFi. And our goal by which we will measure ourselves is how we can bring the broker's security and simplicity on chain so that basically people who are now transacting on the custodial broker, used to the experience of the, of the custodial broker, that these kind of people will be able to transact in DeFi in a way that where they don't shoot themselves in the foot, where they don't uh, hurt themselves and can basically uh, access that with this broker like UX that our users know us for years already. And for DeFi natives, we have the Pantos protocol that uh, Wolf already uh, introduced so nicely. So it's a cutting edge multi-chain protocol. It's still our research and innovation hub. We're partnering with universities there. In addition to that, there are also some Web3 ecosystem initiatives planned simply because we think that as this regulated European, like European broker, we are in a perfect position to kind of build ourselves into a sort of Web3 hub and also partner with other protocols, give ecosystem incentives, etc. And yeah, we don't have too much to announce there yet, but under the hood are definitely also cooking on some initiatives. Yeah, this all is extremely exciting. I'm sure you also agree. So that's why we are looking for people to join us on this um, yeah, exciting mission of building the crypto hub into a kind of Europe's prime uh, DeFi innovation and research platform. We have some open roles and if any one of you guys is interested in joining us along this journey of yeah, bringing retail DeFi really to the masses and making it accessible to retail, this is super exciting for us. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>